Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage from Game 10 of the 2016 World Championship. The score is 5-4 in favor of the challenger Sergei Karyakin who played black in Game 10. The champion Magnus Carlsen played white. Let's get into the game. 75 moves today, I will show you the highlights. Carlsen opened e4 and Karyakin played e5 and played the Berlin defense with three knight f6. Carlsen played bishop g5, not the most common move, the co most common move is castling. And top grandmaster Anis Giri said in a tweet, this bishop g5 is a nice desperate idea. Of course that was meant somewhat tongue-in-cheek. Let's go through the moves. The dark squared bishops got swapped on the 10th move. And Carlsen had his first long think on the 13th move, g2, g3. Quite a logical move, but it took him some time to play it. Nice a3 check. King h1. King h1 instead of the more natural king g2. And we'll see in a minute why Carlsen did not play king g2. Knight e7 is a logical move to take bishop takes e6 out of the game so that black will not get doubled pawns there which might be a problem later in the end game for example. Bishop c4 is also a logical move. The bishop was no longer attacking the knight, was no longer attacking anything, was just hanging in the air, eating air and it's much better on c4. Controlling d5 and looking at f7 and the king at g8. c6 took Karyakin 33 minutes. Of course, there's ideas with d5 or b5 now in the position. Bishop b3, at anticipating one of those pushes. And knight g6 took another 12 minutes. Knight g6 is now possible because the d5 square is now covered by the pawn on c6. So black does not have to be afraid of a knight jump to d5. Queen e2, that was Carlsen, I, Carlsen's idea, and if the king had been on g2, then there would now be knight f4, which is winning the game for black, because of the fork. If the pawn takes, there's another knight coming to f4. a5, a4, bishop e6, this is setting a devilish positional trap. And Carlsen falls for it. He did not see what was coming. Bishop takes e6. F takes e6. And now suddenly the knight on f3 is hanging. So he has to play the knight away. There's no other option. Knight d2. And then suddenly black has a forced draw in the position. He can play. But Karyaka didn't see it. But he could have played. Knight takes f2. Check. King g2, and now the move that Karyakin had missed, knight h4 check. And you cannot take that knight because of queen g6 check, and black is better, much better. So you have to play king g1, and then with knight h3, king h1, knight f2 check. There's a perpetual, and black has made a simple draw in just over 20 moves with black. Karyakin with black would have made a simple draw and that would have been great for him in the context of the match that would have brought him one game closer to the title. But he did not see it. He played d5. Also in the interview afterwards he was asked why did you, uh, tell me why you played d5 and his answer was that is the strongest move in the position. He had not seen the draw Carlsen played queen h5 and gives a second opportunity for a force draw, which is more complicated, but it is there. Again with knight takes f2 check, king g2, and now queen f7, difficult move. The threat is knight f4 check, and the queen on h5 is hanging. So the best move for white is king g1. And then another difficult move that Karyakin hadn't seen, but Carlsen had seen it as he showed in the press conference. 
queen f6 and now the best move is again to go to g2 for white to not be worse for example after let's say you move like rook a e1 there's queen g5 queen takes knight h3 king g2 and knight takes g5 and it is black who is slightly better in this position so this is not a way for white to play so king g2 would be the best move and then queen f7 again and we have another repetition but Kayakin did not see this and played knight g5 and after h4 knight f3 we get into an end game knight takes queen takes queen takes rook takes king g2 and rook f7 this is a 25th move we have two rooks and a knight and eight pawns on each side and white is slightly better this is a long difficult defense for Kayakin and in the next 30 moves a lot happens a lot of shuffling a lot of maneuvering two pairs of pawns were swapped and let's jump to the 56th move after rook h7 to h8 from Karyakin. We still have the two rooks and the knight and now we have six pawns on each side. White's plan is to either push breakthrough with b4, b5 or with g3, through g g3, g4. So he has two plans. The knight on f5 is holding the black position together but he has a lot of weaknesses. White is better here but it is difficult to break through. Carlsen played rook b1. He thought after this move that black was in Zugzwang. Karyakin thought that rook b1 was a move to get to the time control, the 60th move, and he played rook h h7, a blunder, because now Carlsen jumped on the opportunity to push b5. And after the four c takes b5, rook takes b5. Black is in trouble, he's going to lose a pawn, he cannot hold on to b7 and e6, he cannot protect it enough. He tried to play it actively, play it actively with d4, and after rook b6, he played rook c7, given up the pawn on e6, which he could not hold on to for long anyway. Knight takes rook c3, trying to play, play actively now, knight f4, protecting the rook. Rook hc7, knight d5, forking both rooks, so swapping a pair of rooks that way. Rook takes and knight takes, king b8, knight b5. So white is now a solid pawn up. King c8 trying to get the rook, the, the king into the middle. Rook takes d6, rook takes f3, king g2, rook b3, knight d6, check. Swapping the knights, going into a rook endgame. And it's now really a battle for who gets on the fifth rank first. And it's white who wins that battle. Rook e3, e6, king c7, rook takes, rook takes, and rook d5. And now black has to defend passively, and that will not save the game for him. King f3, king b8, the, the game is over now. King f4. King a7, King g5, Rook h8, and after King f6, Karyakin resigned. What did the players have to say? Feels very good. It was not pretty by any means, but I got there in the end. He must have missed 20 knight takes f2 with an immediate draw. It looks a whole lot different now. It wasn't easy, but I managed to break him. I felt I was slightly better at first. What he did with 17 a5 was quite clever. I missed the drawing line. I was, I was relieved when he didn't go for it. After 56 rook b1, black is in zugzwang. If 60, 56 knight h6, then I have 57 g4. I started to be optimistic after b5, but I knew there was a long way ahead. I thought I had made huge progress when I could play b5, but my king was unsafe, so I wasn't sure. It's a relief, as I haven't won in 10 games, and that hasn't happened to me before. Now we're fighting on level terms. 
Jakin said, it was a difficult game. He played well, he created problems. I blundered, but it was a tough position. And 20 d5 was the most logical move in the position, which was clear he hadn't seen the drawing option. I want to play well and not blunder anything in the last two games. The games are difficult, the draws are also difficult, but we have rest days and we will recover. When Magnus played rook b1, I thought he wanted to get to the time control. I didn't realize that he wanted to play b5 immediately. One must feel for the challenger for Sergei Karyakin. Losing a game is horrible, having to resign is terrible. But what is a lot worse is when you hear a few minutes after having gone through this emotional roller coaster of a game that you had a draw, a quite a simple draw in hand hours earlier. Karyakin will have a rest day to recover from this and game 11 will be played on Saturday, November 26. The score is 5-5 five, five now with two games to go. If the score will be 6-6 six, six after 12 games, there will be a tie-break with shorter time control games. If you like this overview of game 10, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to my channel, and you can leave a comment if you want. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you for watching.